Well, we are still with our spotted cat, and hopefully Scott will have some luck with his cheetah and see more epic sightings of them because, well, I think Scott has been spoiled more than anybody. He's had some amazing stuff. I've seen some crazy videos of his, of those cheetah chasing varying animals around. It's just the most ridiculous thing to watch those five cheetahs on the move. So I'm sure Scott will get treated, and if there's a storm rolling in, hopefully that will inspire them to do a bit of hunting. Now, Hosanna is still panting away, and I believe that Scott was discussing, do cats ever overheat and get heat stroke? Well, it is very, very possible for a cat to get heat stroke. It's highly uncommon in the wild cats because they are able to deal with it. As long as they can find shade and they can find water, um, they are generally fine. Um, it's The problem with them is if they get caught out in an area with no shade and no access to water, then heat stroke can set in very, very quickly with the cat. It's something that is quite dangerous for cats, and you'll find that when they're panting, it means that they are very warm. Now, the panting is much the same as what we were discussing earlier. It helps to cool the body down, and how it basically works is that the saliva on the tongue and in the mouth, as air is pushed over it and that rapid breathing is happening, so there's evaporation. That evaporation causes cooling and therefore the blood inside the, the mouth and, and that area cools down and then goes back into the body and that's a very basic kind of way of looking at it but that's how they they do it and that's why they pant a lot particularly in the summer months it's let's see it looks like he's gonna go up the tree hopefully he's going to do it so this might be perfect timing for us let's have a look he's walking towards the tree a little sniffing a bit of dust in the air at the moment in fact there's been a lot of dust in the air no nope, we're going to go to the loo first now you can see he's just in front of the car at the moment and it's a bit of a difficult area that we're in. We're in a, a place where there's a steep slope and it goes up onto the other side so it's not a place that is easy to kind of negotiate and so hopefully if he does go up what we might do is just quickly sneak around onto the other side once he's up in the tree because the light from the other side will be absolutely beautiful. It will be that late afternoon light and Hosanna has a nice gold color to him so if there's a bit of nice light on him it will be fantastic. But he looks like he's going towards the tree. He's certainly gazing with big eyes. Are you going to lie down there, right next to the car? Yes, you are. Okay, well, I'm going to have to just go back a little bit because otherwise we can't see any of him. You can see the front of the car over there. So we'll just try and... So yours is behind me here and he's just saying that he'll move a little bit for me. But if I go back to there, Seb, is that worse or better? There we go, so that's okay, we don't have to stress too much. But yours is being very nice and moving a little bit fast so that we can see him better, which is very kind of him. And you can see every now and then he stares over towards where Tandy is and has a little look. Leo, you're wondering how often big cats will drink water. Well, Leo, big cats drink water regularly, so you'll find, in, especially in a situation when it's hot like this, that they'll probably go down to water at least twice, maybe probably even three times in a day to gain the water that they need. They'll need about three to five liters a day, so they're going to drink quite regularly. In cooler temperatures, obviously less of amount of water is needed. Also, you'll find when they have carcasses, particularly fresh carcasses, and, and lions do this a lot more than what the leopards would but the lions will actually drink a lot of the blood and gain moisture from the blood of the victim that they've or the prey that they've caught so they will get moisture from that but after they've eaten the process of them digesting and breaking down all of that tissue as well as the the heat and the, the breathing rate that quickens means that they do get quite thirsty after a kill and you'll find as soon as they've had something they then tend to head to water and go get something to drink Look how he's sniffing around. I wonder if maybe the scent of Tandy is not in this area as well. Oh, is it just too hot, my boy? Are you trying to find somewhere where it's nice and cool? Mike, you're wondering when a leopard <clears throat> is looking for a territory, which direction does he know? to head into. Um, Mike, well basically there'll be lots of natural factors that he'll will lead him to into territory. So firstly, he's going to hear the dominant males of this area calling. So he's going to hear Tingana making a noise, Anderson making a noise, Quarantine, Kunuma, all of those guys 
v making a lot of vocalizing at night so he's going to know there's a territorial leopard if there's vocalizing there'll also be chemical signatures through scent marking so Tingana when he does his scent marking patrols is marking his territory Hosanna will come across that he'll sniff it and through organs in the roof of his mouth in those little pits called the Jacobson organ he'll analyze that chemical scent and you'll be able to know okay that's a dominant male in this area and so he'll keep moving through these kind of dominant male areas until he finds a place where there's very little marking little very little audio and there is still food and water um, and and safe areas to to inhabit and that's when he'll start to set up his territory or if he's lucky he's going to come into a place where there's maybe a male that's that died for some reason maybe lions have got hold of it or something like that and there's a gap and he can then wedge himself in there or he's going to have to fight for it and that means he's going to go after another male and he's going to have to have a competition and try and oust that male from that area and basically that's what happened with the Mvula, Tingana and Anderson so when I first started at Chitwa Mvula was the dominant male around Chitwa here on Juma um, he came in a little bit but there was a male called Jordan that was around here and so Mvula was just south of Jordan and to the east so into Torchwood and Coral those areas and a bit into Mala Mala. Then Jordan disappeared and Mvula started shifting a lot further north. Then Anderson started to appear and that pushed Tingana from Elephant Plain Simambili side, pushed him further east and that then pushed Mvula north into Buffel's Hook and then Anderson took over where Tingana was. So there's an ever-changing flow in it and, and as they get bigger and stronger so they'll be more confrontational to other male leopards around them and try and expand their territory as much as possible. But it's all to do with chemical and, and audio in terms of which direction they're heading to be able to find a territory. It also depends if they get chased. If Hosanna gets chased by Tingana you might find a situation where he's going to end up going into another area and he's going to try and move south if he gets chased south or north if he gets chased north it just depends on how that male that's in the area pushes him and moves him and makes him kind of go into different places right now the beautiful Hosanna is looking around scanning the skies and hoping not to see any signs of vultures. That's why he would have put his carcass in the tree. And so, talking about vultures, I believe our friend James Henry is also out with a bird of prey. <laughs> 